We're about to get started in a conversation about the film, about the soundtrack of the book of Clarence. It looks like Jay-Z is here, waiting on James. Um, Jay-Z, hello, how are you doing? What's up, what's up? It's nice to, to connect with you. We're waiting on James, but congratulations. The night is finally here. How are you feeling right now? Um, I feel great. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here, for doing this. Everybody for tapping in. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, we, we're excited. We this you know, a love of ours telling stories and, um, creating this world, which where Clarence lives and, uh, there he goes. There he is. James. You got to take your speaker, put your, your mic is closed. It's not, he's new to technology, you know what I mean? Yeah, we gotta, we gotta, James, you just got to press the mic. Uh-oh. Uh, not that he left. Okay, well, <laughs> for everyone joining, <laughs> welcome again to the Book of Players room. We are so excited to have you. Jay-Z is here. He is with us right now. Jay, talk to me a little bit about this this film. I mean, we know it's a journey of self-discovery. We know it stars Lakeith Stanfield. But a lot of people, when they watch the, sh watch the commercial, they're like, wait. What is it about? So for anybody who might not know, how would you describe what this film is about? It's just, a, yeah, it's a journey about a young man who finds his faith. Like, you know, like much of us, you know. Um, he grows up in a time where, where you know, in, in biblical times, and his brother is, is, his twin brother, older by 10 minutes, is running around with a group called the 12 apostles. Right. And, um, this is all new to him. You got to figure it's not, it's not, it's not Jesus of our understanding. It's Jesus of Clarence understanding, you know, a carpenter. And so he, everything is new. It, it's all, it's all first time for him. This is the first time he's hearing about it. The Bible doesn't exist. And, um, he goes about this, this journey and, you know, he wants to be someone. He grows up in a neighbor. He wants to impress the girl he loves. His mom is sick. He wants to take care of him, you know, get a, you know, a bigger house. You know, just normal, like, regular stuff. You see yourself in Clarence. And because he's actually, you know, inherently just a good person, even when he gets himself into, like, deep situations of chariot racing, et cetera, et cetera, it, it, it typically works out for him because inherently he's a good human being. He just wants the best for everyone. He, he, you know, he's a jokester and, you know, he's in love with this girl and he wants to impress her. It's pretty, it's pretty much that that's his tale. And we all see ourselves in Clarence and, you know, all these other ca characters and you see, he's not a tough guy. You know, he guys are probably chasing him around. But also, when 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 faced with adversaries, adversary, adversary, he stands <laughs> up. <laughs> he stands up in the face of it, like you know. Even when he fought yeah. to, to free the slaves, and you know, even when his morality, you know, when he start becoming famous, you know, what he did could have just, you know, paid his debt off and and been in the clear. He decided to double down. And you know, fr free the slaves. So yeah, you know, it, it that that's pretty much it. Like you know, Malcolm X was in Malcolm X was born. You know, Malcolm Little, and he had to go yeah. to a journey to become who he, who we know him as today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, hello, James. I've been here. The, I've been here the whole the whole time. <laughs> Listen to my name get dragged through the mud. <laughs> <laughs> so, firstly, I'm the, tech, I'm the technology whiz kid, but Twitter changed its name to X. And the thingy, da -da 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 -da. but now it's all golden. I'm back. Yeah. Well, Jay Z, Jay was over here explaining the film, but I was starting this room one. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. You're listening to the Book of Clarence conversation. Jay Z is here. James Samuel is here. Director, composer, writer, all the things of the film uh, is, is here with us right now to talk. And there might be some special guests, so stay on here for sure. But uh, 2005, you have this idea. 2017, you write it, and now tonight. The film is finally premiering, James. What is this moment like for you? It's a big moment. You know, like, I had the idea maybe 
I think close to 20 years ago, I had the idea like, okay, this film, book clowns, and your brain kind of starts taking notes, right? Your brain starts taking yeah. notes. I wrote the first song for it, I think, 2005, six. But then I didn't write the script. I was just like, it was just conversations. And then, you know, a lot of things that were um, just gesticulating in my, in my head, they kind of went into hyperdrive around the time me and Jay-Z met in 2010. Then those thoughts and ideas that I was having to do particular films and this and that and the other, they all kind of um, became a reality because Jay, Jay-Z is also floor to the ceiling creative. So when we're talking, we start talking about music and film and this and that and the other. And then, and then um, it was 2017 when we were shooting the short film Legacy for Jay's 444 album that I think that was just a point in both of our relationship where we were already like on the track with The Harder They Fall, but where we just started speaking about Clarence so much that it was just kind of time to write it. So, so, and I wrote it quick, Jay would tell you, I wrote that script really quick. It almost like bled out of me, right? Mm. And then, um, so, so to go through that journey, and then to be on the, today on the dawn of its release is a trip. One, it's like a release, like, oh. but two, it's really fascinating. It's almost like I'm outside myself, um, kind of looking at me and looking at everyone else and looking at. It's a really trippy thing. But yeah. I feel, pr- I feel like proud of both myself and Jay at all the areas we've gone through in our um, in our personal journey with Clarence and then we're just here today it's beautiful man yes I mean one of my favorite I, I got to see the film a couple of weeks ago actually right before the Christmas time and as a believer I was like skeptical I walked into this thing skeptical like all right what James is about to show me because I love James Mm -hmm. I love you I love the heart of they fall and I was really blown away by the way that you were able to imagine this like contextual world of what the New Testament was like for other people what were the people who were witnessing all these incredible miracles the the other things and I want you to talk a little bit about why you had to reimagine black people in spaces where we've been historically and purposely left out? Why was it so important for us to be represented in the New Testament? Well, we have to look at that word reimagine. I didn't reimagine nothing. The Bible... Mm, that's right. The, like, the Bible talks about skin the color of burnt brass, hair the texture of lamb's wool. That don't sound like Charlton Heston to me. So, <laughs> we, were re, we were reimagined out, just like with the, just like with the Western. Right, we were reimagined and remixed out of that joint. So I didn't mm. actually reimagine anything. But what it is is we all grew up. We all we all grew up. If our direct parents aren't religious, our grand our grandparents are religious. Jay had had a line. I can't remember what the line was, but on the I'm sure it's on the four 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 album about um, uh, the Jesus images on on a, on your grandma's wall. Right. Mm-hmm. We all have grown up with white Jesus in one of our family's house, right? <laughs> and then we grew up watching those watching those movies. And I love I'm a I'm an ardent student of of film. So is Jay, right? And we love those movies. We love like the biblical era epics. But we just can't relate to the visual presentation. We just can't relate to it, right? It's like nothing um uh we know when the, when the Bible, you just pick a random story from the Bible, it will talk about the hood, it will talk about the neighborhood, it will talk about poor people, mm. right? And it will talk about the areas that, that we see growing up, or like myself, like Jay, the areas we grew up in. So for me, <clears throat> I just wanted to make a, a movie that was that resembled the area I grew up in, but I wanted to transpose it to those days to show how 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 similar um, uh, those days are to these, and to show how much nothing has nothing has changed. There was still the oppressor. There was still the you know the um, the people without. There was still the dreamers. There was still people living in hope. 
there were still the disbelievers and, and the believers. It was pretty much exactly the same as what's going on now. And the conversations that I would have with, with Jay about, you know, the imagery of, of white Jesus and and the kind of whitewashing of 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 all of the imagery we've we've had with the, with the Bible, we just wanted to do something where we were really respectful with the with the good book, right? We were really respectful um, about it, but just wanted to tell the story of it, of it every every man. You know, while Jesus was walking on Earth, there was still like six and a half, seven billion other people walking right. on planet Earth at that time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. I love that perspective. I think it's so important. And y'all, I've heard y'all say in these interviews, like you've taken uh, us to Westerns and now the New Testament. And and Jay, like, talk to me a little bit about why, in your perspective, it's important to put us in these places we've been left out of. Yeah, I think it's important to uh, like like we like we we've gone back and we've um, reexamined a lot of things. Yeah, you know, they reexamined Hamilton. Mm. Wait a minute. The president was the front guy. This guy was writing a speech. They they reexamined Columbus Day. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, uh, you, you know, they reexamined Pocahontas. Like all these things mm. need to be reexamined. And it's like, OK, so when did we show up? Because we're not in these films. Mm. What year did black people show up on the planet? Right. And it's like, it's like okay, so it's well, a crazy thing, right? And we talk yeah, about no. it, me and James. We laugh about it. I, I, we came to the conclusion that we showed up at Roots. No, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once I, I swear, I swear, no lie, no lie, Jay. No lie, Jay. One time, Jay called me. One time, Jay called me. I think it was like three months ago. He went, "Hey, yo, what year did we show up? Like, what year were we invented? Because we weren't in the in the old. We weren't in the old West." We certainly weren't in the Bible days. Like, what year did we did we shop? And Jay was like, "Yeah, I think it, I think it was Roots, roots when, we, <laughs> when we first came when we first came to to be invented." So yeah, for us, it is, and, and I love that word you use, reimagine. Like for us, it's not a reimagination; it's more of a a, a reexamination. Like, mm. let's tell these stories and let's include people that existed during those times. And if Africa is the motherland. I don't know. Maybe the maybe the story we're telling is a bit more accurate than a reimagination. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. we we definitely were there. Like let's say that. Definitely. Let's like look, <laughs> like look. It's a, like you know, and, and it's a good word you use, man, because it's a it's a hot word. Reimagine. Like I have to imagine Yul Brynner as Egyptian in te, in mm. the Ten Commandments. Mm. You know, that's, I, that's a that's, that's, a a stretch. Imagine- that's a stretch. Yeah. That's a stretch. That's a full stretch. I have to imagine real hard. Which is, next minute, one minute, and to think of this, what it does to a kid. One minute, this man is the is the pharaoh, right, of yeah. Egypt. The next minute, you'll bring it, is the king of Siam. Talking mm. about, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So, I'm like, wait, okay, he's Chinese one minute, he's Egyptian the next minute, he's Asian one minute, African the next where where do we come in? So we don't have to imagine ourselves in the in the uh, biblical era. And incidentally, even if we did before, we don't have to any longer. We got the Book of Clarence. Mm. And what I love working with James is like much like my writing music and my music career is I get to tell a story. We get to have fun and the beats amazing and blah whatever. And you like the hook. But there's also like an Easter egg hunt of things that like are real and, 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 and grounded in something real and like some real pain and some real stories and some real, you know, uh, aspiration and inspiration. So, you know, like we did with the old West, we got to tell a story, you know, a story that that uh, James um, pretty much conceptualized and we worked on, but we also got the set the record straight with uh trudy smith and uh nat love and yeah. bass reeves and uh like all these yeah. people existed these are real people so we got to to tell a story and entertain but at the same time you walked away and you, you did some research or you said wait a minute hold on that really happened that really mm. you know those times same thing with clarence is the same same type of thing like the same uh, same thing same yeah. thing yeah same, i mean i I was listening to you, uh, James, on your some of your interviews and talking about how they're literally Thomas. Thomas had a twin. Like there's there's yeah. words 
there's like a, a whole the, a whole belief that because of the was the Hebrew word or the Greek word for his name there he has a twin and so the book of Clarence what did that come to you like once you found that out or did you go the back story to no the story the more of the story um came once I found out Doubting Thomas his name actually wasn't Thomas right and they used to call him for his name twin and the Bible doesn't speak about him, whether he had a twin brother or twin sister. Like, <clears throat> as much as the book of Clarence is entertaining, as Jay was saying, there's so many Easter eggs in there. Like, a lot of it, I would I would venture to say, although it's, it's you know, it's an uh, entertaining film, all of it is actually based in fact. Thomas was a twin. There were people going around. The Bible speaks of Simon the Sorcerer, right? There was hundreds of people in Jesus' time period um, walking around saying they are the Messiah. Jesus, in Matthew 24, 24, 5, Jesus says, many will come in my name saying that I am the Christ and they will defy or they will mislead many. Right, so there was there was so Jesus spoke of this, and 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 the Bible speaks of Simon the sorcerer, Simon the AKA Simon the magician, who tried to buy his way into the apostles. He tried to be the thirteenth apostle. This is all fact. And it was everyone was hustling, and and you know if Jesus, you, you have to think if Jesus came around. Firstly, you, you have to rem, you have to remind yourself. That Jesus only had 12 apostles. He didn't have 7 billion. Yeah. He had 12, 12 followers. And he, when he was doing his sermons on the mountains, he had anything from 100 to a couple of hundred people listening and people would be listening to his word. But it was after he, he was crucified <clears throat> that all of the legions of followers came. If all of these legions of followers were there in the first place, he would never even, even been able to be captured by the Romans. Mm. you know, And they would never have allowed him to be crucified. So... When you think of, of this stuff, you have to think about, like, what was it like for Clarence in that particular time and space to hear this man saying he's the Messiah? There will be a lot of um, disbelievers. And, and, for, and, and Jay said an interesting um, thing. I, I want you to talk on it, Jay, what, what, you, what you said about uh, Thomas being an apostle and going off with the Messiah and, and, and therefore strengthening Clarence's disbelief. Yeah, so a lot of times when you, um, you again, you got to remember the time frame. And here it is, his twin brother, his mom is sick, and his twin brother is running after this guy and leaving their mom home. So for Clarence, his faith was delayed because his anger about Jesus or his disbelief or his delay of faith came because he was really mad at his brother. He's really upset his brother. Like, you following this guy? He's not, he's not, what it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And it's really, it was really the trigger for him. If you think about, um, if you you frame it during the time. Also, you got to remember, just to take it away from religion for a second, it would be like the guy who grew up in Kingston and had the, uh, was in the talent show with Bob Marley. Right, he didn't know who Bob Marley was going to be at the time. Right, he came in number one. He beat Bob Marley. That's why he's probably telling that story right yeah, now today. Yeah, exactly, you tell that I was way better than Bob Marley. And they like, man, Bob Marley is God. <laughs> Bob Marley yeah. is God. I don't even know what you're talking about. He's like, yeah, okay, not for me. You know, this, yeah, exactly. It's a different time. Um, so yeah, his his faith was delayed, and then you know as you as you you know as you saw and everyone will see you know then his journey begins and yeah. you know at some point he's forced to be faced with something bigger than himself he has a moment you know we call it you know the walk on water moment which you know we we talked about that we all have had you know yes wait let's talk about that scene because that's a really like there are a few scenes that stood out to me it was the nights over egypt dance yeah, we don't we don't want to give too many we don't want to give too many spoilers. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Sorry guys. Okay, we'll keep that. But just know it's a really great moment coming. Y'all, it's a lot that happens in this film, but I do want to say, like, you have y'all have talked about the theme walking on water and the importance mm -hmm. of what that means and 
there is, you know, talk about this theme in the film. So both of you all had interesting perspectives on why that theme was important to take on from the actual biblical story and put into this film. Can you talk to me about walking on water and how it relates to daily life and overcoming our own mindsets in certain spaces? If I've nothing else it teach you, sure. If nothing else it teaches you grace and humility. You know, when you when you constantly uh, viewing yourself and analyzing, like, man, how did that happen? How did I get here? You know, how, how did um, you know, whatever success, Gia, whatever success or whatever your path was, and it's like, yeah. man, I remember I was dreaming of this, and now look at me, and this is these are things I'm doing. Every moment that you have, you have to like, you know, you go back and you reexamine those moments, and you're grateful for it, and it's like. Yeah. You know, th those moments where you, it's like, it's unexplainable. Mm -hmm. So it was just, for Clarence and in, 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 in this film, it's a, a, a metaphor, a physical metaphor for a, a walk on water moment. And we've had millions of, not millions, we've had many of them, um, you know, in our lives. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's just, it's just, um, it, it forced Clarence to like, really like, humble himself, you know, have the grace and the space and created the space for him to believe in something that was bigger than himself. Like, you know, the universe had to conspire for all these things to happen. You know, I, I'm from Marcy Projects. You know, some of the things that I've done and some of the places I've been and through my travels, I'm like, I can't even believe that I'm here. Like, to this day, um, Jay Brown's birthday recently was another moment for me. Like, man, this is, this is crazy what we're doing. And, um, you know, if it, it, it forced um, Clarence to say, you know, it flipped his his tagline to like, you know, I don't believe I know because there's no other way. It's inexplainable. It's unexplainable. There's no other way. Um, you know, I'm trying to hold back some of the things that was. <laughs> it's tough. It's really tough. I'm it's, trying yeah, to yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. tough. Yeah, yeah. It's really tough. But yeah, no, I get what you're saying. I mean, I think the the idea of even um you know as as we read that passage like the idea that it's so crazy for people to walk on water that you literally have to believe that you can stand on something that is not meant to be stood on and if you apply that to creativity if you apply that to you know just dreaming in general it really does work as a metaphor because we have to imagine and have faith for faith for things that no one else has done no one has ever been a jay-z no well no one has ever been a james samuel so y'all literally had to walk on water for your journeys to come alive so i love that theme in particular and for, for James. and for us to even and for us to even absolutely meet, exactly. right and fast and fast even meet and to come out of the circumstances and make it out of the circumstances and the environments that we grew up in everyone experiences and also what i love about the walking about that particular scene and what we're talking about is not only do we experience not only does everyone experience a walking on water moment firsthand in their life child childbirth is a walking on water moment, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When you're when you're when you're when you're with a woman, right? When you and you and she's with child, and you put your hand on her stomach, and I'm not even talking about feeling the kick when the child moves in her stomach, and you see, you realize you are with a walking, talking, living, breathing superhero. The the the, the, the it gives you a whole different perspective on on women, on life, on God, on it humbles you in such a way. To, and that, and that's and to me that is without giving too much away, Jay. I don't know how to say, it, but Thomas's brother, I mean Clarence's brother, witnessing like so. We experience we experience firsthand walking on water moments, but we also witness someone else's um, walk on water. That entirely changes changes mm. us and, and and our perspective. So it's it's for for us it's so. Um, Layered, and these are the things that um, Jay and I have spoken about for years. Love it. 